On this Debaco University video, we're going to explore the potency of cannabis grown under LED and HPS lights based on a scientific article. So I know this is a debate that constantly goes on, so let's look at some scientific research and see how this changes the potency of cannabis. All right, let's get into this uh, highly uh, debated subject, LED versus HPS lights. So first off, this is the research article. There's the links provided, fairly recently published. Um, so if you want to go back to the original article, here you go. I'm going to kind of break it down and give you the summary of it here. So first off, this is the great debate, HPS, high pressure sodiums versus LED lights. However, most people do not consider uh, this to be a debate. They feel that LED lights or nothing. This is kind of the wave of the future. These are the old school methods. They only want to grow under LED lights. And this is kind of part of that debate to some extent. But let's look at it from a scientific standpoint here. So first off, this article compared these different lights here. They had one HPS light, the e Papillonian 1000 watt double-ended HPS, and then they had three LED lights that they were looking at in comparison, um, comparing here, I should say. Um, this is all the lights as part of the study. However, after their comparison of the LED lights, then there were only two. They kept with the, of course, high pressure sodium for comparison, and they kept the fluence bioengineering, which is now known by fluence by Osram, uh, the spider uh, plus LED lights. The first part of the study really was geared to evaluating leading LED light manufacturers and models to identify which option provides the most uniform distribution of the light at the leaf, uh, at the leaf and canopy, as well as the important it's a factor at producing a consistent end product. So they wanted a basically the best of the best quote, LED lights, at least in their uh, regiments of their data collection. The fluence by Osram, the Spider X Plus model, clearly demonstrated optimum light distribution, photosynthetic response, and also maintained leaf temperature within the optimum range to achieve maximum photosynthetic rates. So that's why they chose that one over the others. Just to go back for a second, were the two others um, that were presented here. This ultimately is the LED light that they compare to this high pressure sodium there. So let's get into some of the data here. Probably the most interesting part was figure four. Uh, in the study, all the cannabis cultivars grown under LED lights yielded an increase of THCA percentage with an average increase of 5.39%. The mean of 25.06% THCA under eight LED lights versus only 19 0.67% under high pressure sodium lights here. So it shows you the potency and provided that yes, LED lights does yield a um, greater uh, percentage of THCA. However, most growers would stop here and say throw out all their AP HPSs and go with LEDs, but we'll just explore this just a little bit further. So first off, what does this generally mean to the growers? Many growers would think that LED lights would yield them more uh, THCA, which is when while the study did show that there are that did show this, there are other factors that must be taken into consideration. With indoor facilities, there are other environmental control factors that need to be optimized to ensure quality harvest, temperature, humidity, um, regulating that temperature, keeping within tight ranges, uh, the intensity of the light, the uh, area that the light covers. There's a lot of other factors that need to be taken into consideration. Uh, so just don't think that LED lights is going to be your only way to get high THCA levels in this example. Now, THCA in lighting. To break the 30% or even 35% total THC theoretical barrier, one does not need LED lights, as this can be done with high-pressure sodium lights used during flowering. So just understand that 30% is kind of that theoretical barrier, even 35%. Seeing test results that show um, flower that does have higher than 30% THC, total THC, and that is they are grown under HPS lights. I don't think you have to have LED lights. LED lighting, though, can help this, but all factors must be taken into consideration, especially coverage area and related PAR readings, as well as feeding schedules, as well as um, stresses and non-stresses to the cannabis plant. And again, to prove these total amounts, we're looking, of course, at getting an analytical report, uh, a third-party tested, so we know exactly what those values are coming in at. Now, for the growers, uh, general considerations, so just keep this in mind that sure, LED light technology may be the way of the future, but at the current time, taking into full cost of initially purchasing, ownership, and number of fixtures needed, HPS is still price competitive. So keeping that in mind, there's a lot of other factors to can 
consideration in a grow facility. LED lights, LED lights do offer the advantage of being full spectrum, at least in some cases, so growers can see the plants in their true uh, form, basically without the need for any filtering lenses. And there may be some beneficial wavelengths of the light produced that can aid uh, in cannabis plants' ability to produce certain compounds at greater concentrations than grown under other lighting. But this does not mean HPS lights are useless, and if available to growers, they should still continue to utilize them. Because we have to consider, yes, uh, we've got a lot of other factors. We've got some more heat, of course, with HPS lights, but a lot of times to get the full PAR reading coverage area of a 1,000 watt double-ended HPS, you may need to purchase more LED fixtures. Uh, so again, that needs to be kept in mind there. As well as the other kind of changing over of electrical panels, so we need to keep all of those very various cost, repairs, maintenance, all in mind when we're looking at a grow facility. So what's the general take home message of this article? Well, many companies produce LED lights, but in general, you wanna live by the motto that good LED lights are not cheap and cheap LED lights are not good. HPS lights can still produce quality cannabis and for the cost are worth serious consideration uh, by more growers. Uh, I'm not saying that LED lights are bad. Just look at the full cost there. And a lot of people say, oh, LED lights run uh, with less wattage. They need less cooling, and that may be true, but just keep in mind the mounting heights as well. Uh, a lot of times LED lights do need to be closer to the plants to be effective, or if, if you increase that spacing, your uh, coverage area may not be as great. So look at the full picture uh, when considering light changes, but if you have access to HPS lights, don't consider them to be a horrible option. They may uh, be a great option for you to utilize uh, and may be actually more cost-effective in some cases than LED lights.